because I know you're here to hear from Megan and the other school counselors and not from me. Um, so for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Paul Ribeiro, one of the assistant principals here at the high school. I just have uh, two general announcements um, that are uh, pertinent to juniors and their families. Um, so number one, um, June 3rd is the junior prom. It's going to be held at the Italian Center. So additional information will come out as we get closer and students will be able to register through um, School Cash Online and things like that. But as of right now, the prom is scheduled, the junior prom is scheduled for June 3rd at the Italian Center in Stanford. Um, also, uh, another question that we get often from juniors and their families is um, when can juniors park on campus? So um, uh, typically uh, in the middle of May, uh, the majority of our seniors will go off on senior internship. And when they do that, that opens up a significant number of parking spots. So um, we'll, again, as we get closer to that mid-May uh, point, we'll um, release information to juniors and, and all of you as their parents um, about the process for that. Um, hopefully no one in here is in this boat. Um, for juniors that maybe had some type of um, disciplinary infraction or maybe had a parking ticket or something like that when they weren't supposed to be parking on campus, uh, their ability to be able to park um, at that point during that time in, in May and June might be um, delayed. We're not saying they can't do it at all, but we may delay it by a week or so depending on anything that happen but um, that obviously is not the case for the majority of our juniors so again two announcements one about the prom one about uh, junior parking later in the spring uh, both will have additional information that is sent home as we get closer to those dates um, before Megan and her crew go are there any general questions that you may have about the high school that I can help with all right here's hoping that spring comes very soon so here you go Meg Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you. I'm Megan Emanuels, and I'm the Director of Guidance here. Um, hopefully, you all have juniors. That's primarily what we're here to talk about. Um, for how many of you is this your oldest? First time? Okay. Um, having fun yet? Um, and for how many of you is maybe this your last? Okay. Also exciting. Um, so we're going to try and walk the line that we're usually always trying to walk, which is to give you the information that you need to help you feel comfortable and confident without overwhelming you. So um, it's a it's a tightrope that we walk every day, and that's what we're going to continue to do today. So we're going to hit just around some major topics, um, and then we'll have some time for for Q and A. Um, I would ask with the Q and A if it's really specific to like your situation and your child, that's best followed up with individually with your school counselor. But if you have general questions about what to expect. Um, that maybe the whole group could benefit from, then we're happy to take those questions. Um, I'm joined today by Dr. Caitlin Stanton and Mark Power, two of our eight school counselors. Um, so they're here to, to represent, um, and they'll speak a little bit on some of the programmatic things that we're doing. Um, so I get the fun job of talking about standardized testing junior year. Um, I'm going to let them talk about the more fun parts of our program. Um, and again, we work really hard to give you the information that you need and it's sort of in the time that you need it. So I've learned in my 20 years in this job that if I give it to you way too soon, then it sort of gets swept under a very busy rug. If I give it to you too late, then there's like panic. So if you haven't heard about something, chances are it's because you don't have to worry about it yet. We work really, really hard to give you the information when you need it um, and as much information as we can. We communicate a lot through the DPN. You've probably gotten more emails from me than you'd like. And we're doing a ton of communication with your kids. So your kids right now are in junior guidance seminar and hopefully they come home every week and tell you it was the best period of their week, tell you all about what we're doing. Haha, ha, that's hilarious. I know that doesn't happen. Um, although we did hear today, somebody said that a kid, my kid comes home and tells me all the time about guidance seminar. Um, but we are doing a lot of talking to your kids and we are putting some ownership on them as it should be, right? We are scarily about 18 months off of them heading off on their own. I have two in college. I'm living that terrifying dream right now. Um, and so we're asking that like, I had a parent say, I haven't gotten information about scheduling the junior conferences. Well, your child has. Um, and so we're trying to obviously get them in appropriate ways to, to step up and take some ownership as well. So standardized testing. Um, this week, I am in junior English classes, helping them to get on to the platform where they will take the online digital SAT school day that is required by the state of Connecticut. That test will be on March 22nd. Um, there is all the details that you want for both juniors and your other age children in the DPN this week in terms of transportation. But the short of it is that um, the state requires all juniors to take this test. It is not a test you need to register for. The state takes care of that for you. 
It is not a test you have to pay for. The state also does that. But it is a usable score. Um, so if they want to send the score to colleges next year, it's a usable score. Um, there's no writing, um, but it'll be in their college board accounts. If a student is like, I'm going to only take an ACT, I know I have to take this for the state, they can cancel their scores. It'll never appear there. And they also won't get sent unless you send them. So if you're only going to send ACTs, um, colleges won't see those scores anyway if you're not sending from College Board. Okay, and again, your counselors can talk through what that means, but you do have the option of canceling the scores after the test within about 24 hours um, if you choose to do that. So I'll be working with the kids on the platform. Um, the kids always groan when they open the platform because it's the same platform as the SBACs, so they've seen it. Um, so they're like, oh, I remember this. Um, so it's not an unfamiliar platform to the kids. Um, so that's just, you know, again, just a, a reassurance there. Um, They'll test the more juniors will come to school regular time on the 22nd. Um, if they're taking it regular time, they'll be done between 11.30, 11.45. Juniors will be allowed to go home that day. Um, so we'll have a midday bus run to bring them home. You can pick them up if you'd like. They can attend classes. We don't, we don't tell them they can't, um, but they will be allowed to go home. 9th, 10th, and 12th grade will come in in time to start classes and have an abbreviated schedule um, starting at 12.25. Um, so that's sort of how that day looks. Um, and again, I'll leave room at the end for any questions about um, SAT school day. Um, they're going to also junior year take for the state of Connecticut the NGSS science test. So that's the next generation science standards test. Um, they will be working on um, preparation in their science classes. That is also done digitally um, on school owned devices. That will be um, probably the Wednesday after, um, after Memorial Day in May. Um, we need to kind of clear AP exams. I know a lot of our juniors are taking AP exams. We like them to get as much curriculum under their belt as they can get, so that'll be at the end of May. Um, that is an untimed test, so we do it, um, they do it 90 minutes, and if they need to come back and finish it in the next day or two just to finish up, they'll have time to do that. So they can actually come back at a later time and finish the test, so that'll be in May. Um, PSATs that were held in October, those scores should be in your students' college board accounts. So um, you should have access to those for some time now. If you have any trouble, reach out to your counselors. Um, and then AP exams, it will be the first two weeks of May. Um, and so lots of information coming on that. The deadline to register for those tests is tomorrow at 11.59 PM. I have to submit a final order of many, many, many exams. Um, so uh, many, many exams have been ordered. I think we're, we basically have everybody, but just a final reminder that if your student hasn't registered for those, the registration is through total registration, not through College Board. Um, and I'll be sending an email out to everybody tonight, just a final reminder on that. But if, you, if that one has slipped your mind, um, final deadline for AP exams is tomorrow. Okay, so I am going to turn on who's going to speak next, but okay, Mark's going to talk to you a little bit about our award-winning guidance seminar program, best period of the week, um, and then Caitlin will talk to you a little bit about junior planning, and then we'll, again, leave some time for questions. Thanks. All righty, so as uh, Megan mentioned, all students um, at Darien High School have what's called guidance seminar. So um, hopefully at this point, maybe you've heard about it, but maybe not, and if not, that's okay. I'm about to kind of give you an overview of what we do in seminar. Um, so basically seminar is like a guidance class. Um, all students will have it in their schedule. They meet once per eight day cycle, and it's held quarterly. Um, so first semester or first quarter, we work with our seniors, second quarter with the freshmen, third quarter with juniors right now, and in fourth quarter, we'll be working with the sophomores. Um, each grade level will have kind of like a theme or a focus. Um, with the junior, juniors, we talk about planning for life after high school, which is kind of like a, a big topic and something that we want them to just start thinking about now. Obviously, it's still a bit of a ways away, but um, at this point, start to think about what they might want to do. Um, so we begin our first lesson with um, options. So what are the options after you graduate? Um, we talk about you know going into the workforce, um, applying to college, maybe taking a gap year, um, volunteering, uh, trade school, so you know, the military, we remind them that there are plenty of options. While many of our students choose to go to college, um, there are some choices. Um, in the second lesson, we um, look at the junior packet. And as you may be familiar with, the junior packet prepares the students for our junior planning meetings, which we also talk about life after high school. Um, but it's also a great tool to help them self-reflect um, and kind of think about what do I want to do uh, after high school. And if they've already have a, a plan to you know, attend college, it also helps them to think about what college might be a good fit. 
as far as location and size, because we want them to, at this point, start thinking about those things. Um, we also, this year, are trying something new. Uh, we're piloting a program called SCORE. Now, hopefully, at this point, you may have heard about that. Um, SCORE is very similar to Naviance. It's a, uh, a search tool that helps students um, find colleges that might be a good fit to apply to. So we began work on that already, and hopefully uh, your children have had some experience with that, um, but it was in the second seminar that we introduced that to them. The third lesson, we worked on course registration um, as well as graduation requirements because it's around this time that students are picking their electives and classes for next year. Um, so the hope is that they're starting to think about not only the classes they're interested in, but also they have to think about what classes do I need to graduate? because um, they'll also be having a follow-up meeting with their counselors to um, finalize those classes before we put them into Aspen. This year, we're also um, working with students on self-care plans. We're talking about the importance of self-care, and we're helping them to create their own self-care plans, which we'll be revisiting not only the third, but the fourth and the fifth seminars this year. Um, the fourth uh, seminar, we're gonna be talking to the students about resumes, now we had them as sophomores create their resumes and we're revisiting that with them right now. We're also talking about the importance of not only resumes but um, interviews in the college application process. And we talk about that as a form of demonstrated interest which is something that they'll get to hear more about as time goes on. We'll also be taking a very important step in the direction of the whole uh, college application process in the fourth seminar where they create their own common app account. Um, and so that's something they'll be using as a senior, potentially, to apply to colleges. And then in the fifth uh, seminar, the lesson's about um, their personal essay. So we're going to ask all the students to write a personal essay, which they could then use um, in the Common App when they apply to schools later on. And we're going to share some resources through the Google Classroom. And hopefully, um, in the fifth uh, seminar, we'll have time for them to actually begin starting that essay, which we ideally want them to have um, completed before the start of their senior year. So we try to give them some time during our fifth seminar uh, to begin that essay. And so that's kind of a, a brief overview as to what we cover in our junior seminar. And again, we'll take time for questions afterwards. And I'll turn it over to- Can you speak just for a second? Yeah. About senior, just, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but we'll start the year next year with senior seminar. I mean, just to kind of so yeah, so the, um, and as I mentioned before, so each quarter we work with a different group. We start the year, first quarter with seniors, and that's intentional. We want to have them straight from the start because some students will be starting off their year um, already applying to colleges, um, which is kind of a scary thought because at this point, you know, you have juniors right now and, um, you know, Time will fly by and all of a sudden we'll be in the, in the fall. But um, there are some application deadlines which fall earlier in the year. Um, October 15th is kind of the first one that falls. So we want to make sure to get to those students when we start working with them in the first quarter, um, which is the end of August, beginning of September. So we'll have enough time to work with them to also continue working on that essay if they didn't get a chance to complete it. Um, also to con continue working with the Common App um, and also the entire application process. Um, and we'll be working with them, again, on a regular basis through the seminar, so we'll be kind of walking them through it. Um, but of course, that can be uh, an anxious time for parents as well. So um, if this is your first one going through, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about uh, the application process. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so as Mark and Megan mentioned, we are doing lots of talking to all of your students about this process and life after high school, but we also want the parents to have the information that they need. So we started off um, our process with Junior Planning Night in the fall. Um, we have posted resources from that on our website, so if you missed it or you wanted a recap or you wanted to check out some of the other breakout sessions that we had, those materials and resources are posted on the Darien High School website under counseling and then college and post-secondary planning. 
We do have information on there from the overview of the process. There's a video and a PowerPoint. There's also information from the session that was application tips from a college admissions counselor. That college admissions counselor spoke about um, this process from their perspective and gave some advice. We also had sessions on standardized testing, athletics in college, music auditions, and art portfolios, applying to schools in the UK, um, gap year programming, and requesting accommodations in college. So again, that information's on the website and is a really great resource if you're interested. There's also a college planning guide on the website, uh, which is a longer packet that the department puts together um, that is there. Then moving forward in the second semester, we have individual planning meetings. So we, we invite the students and their parents to come in and meet with us. These meetings last about 45 minutes. Um, the parents can join us either in person or via Zoom. It is up to you and what works best for your particular family. The students are asked to schedule those meetings um, in guidance so they can come to our department and use either the scheduling laptop that is on the front counter. They all should be familiar with it. They've used it in the past. They're using it right now to sign up for meetings for course selection. But if they do need any help with that scheduling laptop or they just want to schedule the appointment with our guidance secretaries, um, Mrs. Hyatt and Ms. LaJoy are right there and available to help with that process. So we ask the students that they schedule that time for a free period during the school day. Um, we are not able to excuse the students from class. We want them to be in their classes receiving all of that great information from their teachers so that it does need to be during a free time. Uh, we encourage the students to coordinate schedules at home with all of you to see when you might be free to have that meeting and then come into guidance with a couple of dates and times uh, in mind so that they can match up one of those with our calendars, our schedule. In those meetings, it's a really great opportunity to talk about life after high school for your particular students. While the students are receiving a lot of that general information and guidance seminar, and they are able to ask questions in those small groups, these meetings provide a fantastic opportunity for us to dive deeper into that conversation about what your individual student is thinking. So we can go over all the options, and if they are thinking college, we'll go over all the parts of that application process. We will take a look at your your student's transcript. Uh, we'll talk about classes for senior year. We can discuss the standardized testing um, plan for your particular student and whether to send test scores or apply test optional. We also go over teacher letters of recommendation and who your student is thinking about asking. Um, so we can talk through some options for that and make a plan. Um, and then we will ultimately talk about schools um, and colleges that your student is already thinking about and then the counselor can provide a list of additional suggestions for you, your family, to take a look at. Um, this, these meetings are happening up until May 15th, so we do encourage the students to get those meetings on the calendar. Um, as Megan and Mark mentioned, the next couple of months are going to fly by. So even if your family is thinking that a time in April or early May is best suited for you, it is going to be best to get that on our calendar and reserve the time sooner rather than later. Um, there are packets that need to be done in advance. I know Mark spoke a little bit about that. There's one for your student to fill out and there's actually a parent packet. We give you some homework as well. So those are located on the DHS website under counseling and college and post-secondary planning. Those packets are due at least five school days in advance of our meeting so that the counselor has enough time to prepare um, that list of colleges, read through and um, come up with any advice that we're thinking for what your students' plans are. Um, anything I'm missing? Okay, so I think we're at the point where we are going to open it up for questions. Um, and we can, again, take any general questions that you have, and then if there's specific student questions, those are best suited for your child's counselor. Um, I wanna make something really clear as well. We will help your student 
to get to anywhere after post high school that is healthy and productive and helps them to create a life where they can provide for themselves independently and move their life forward. I always joked with my students, I won't help you to your couch to play video games. That's not my job. Um, but we are, we will fully support any plan um, that a student wants to have. I know oftentimes we're talking about college because so many of our kids apply to college, but we're super excited to help kids with wherever they want to be. Um, and so we also, um, the kids will be receiving an, an opportunity to opt into a senior guidance seminar that has a focus that's not so heavy on college. Because if you are one of those students who is thinking, you know, I'm not sure if I want to go to college, but like, I don't think I do. Like, it can be um, challenging to sit in an environment where that's all that's being mostly talked about. Um, those, the college pieces tend to be a little bit more time sensitive um, than other options. And so that tends to be kind of why there's such a, a structure to it. But we'll also offer a senior seminar um, to allow those kids. I'm selfishly going to teach it. Um, I saw, I was like taking that one for myself. Um, so there will be that option. If you have a student that's thinking about that, there'll be an option for a senior seminar um, that won't be so college focused. Okay, questions about anything? Again, we sort of wanted to hit on the big ways. I hope you heard how much we really walk your family through this whole process right along the way. Yes? Yes. So for the most part, schools are still, and jump in here because you guys are in the trenches much more than I am on this, if I misspeak. For the most part, schools are still utilizing what's called score, um, score choice. So if they took it five times, you'll be able to go in and select, these are the administrations I want to send. Um, there are some schools, the IVs, some of the non-IV IVs, um, who will say that they'll still, still super score, but they want to see all the scores. And so potentially, depending on the schools that your child's applying to. Is that accurate? Still accurate. The longer I'm out of the game, the further I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. It'll be a school issued iPad. No, and even on the paper version, they can't go back to a section. So once that section's been completed, like if they're in the math section, they can't go back to the reading section. So same thing. So within the time parameter, they'll be able to go back to questions within the section. And actually, there are some advantages to the digital. What I actually like about this is if a student has forgotten to answer a question, like maybe they've deliberately skipped it, before they hit submit, it'll say, you didn't answer question 17. Do you want to go back and answer question 17? So that's actually an advantage over like the paper version. Um, but they have to work within that section and the time frame. It is not. Yes. Yes, yes, so likely PSATs, um, and so they will, when I'm in, um, so when I'm in classes with kids this week, they will have, um, and thank you for bringing this up because it reminded me to say it, um, there's some things we have to do for pre-administration. They have to say that yes, they're going to be testing at Darien High School, and yes, they attend Darien High School. Um, so they have to answer these questions. They then have the option, brace yourself, to select four scores, four schools that they would like to send their score report to for free, but that gets sent automatically before them seeing scores. So I promise you, I will be telling them, I can't tell them they can't do it. I will be telling them that, keep in mind, you will not see your scores before the colleges see your scores, right? Now, it's an opportunity to save about $10 per score report, so it's about a $40 savings. And so um, we're required by College Board to let them know of that opportunity. Um, but I will be reinforcing to them that the vast majority of students do not do that because they like to see their scores before sending. So you can also reinforce with your children what you would like them to do in that situation. And then um, we will not be having them sign up for the college, the student search service, as you said, um, because that requires consent from you for obvious reasons. So they won't be signing up for that during this time. Yes. The ones that want to see all the scores, um, that's an ever evolving list, especially in a test optional world, to be honest with you. So um, fairtest.org is the best place to see test optional schools. Um, but then it's, I think, school by school. Do we have a, do we, have we seen it? 
Yeah, well, if you're taking, so the ACT and the SAT are two completely separate entities. So um, if you are only, if you have to actively go in and send your scores. So if your student is an ACT student and you go in and you select your ACT scores, they're never going to see your SAT scores. So the only reason you would need to worry about that is if you intend to send an SAT. Otherwise, it's sort of buried in this completely separate entity. Um, and then I haven't, I haven't seen a database of schools that are requiring score choice versus um, Georgetown is a school that jumps out as one that has stayed fairly consistent yeah. as wanting to see all scores. It's like the Ivies and the non-Ivy Ivies like that, yeah. Right. And even yeah. some of the Ivies now yeah, are, are not even requiring, yeah. So it is, it is sort of case by case, but I feel like we are, you know, and again, we're mostly still living in a test optional world. Like a lot of schools, some schools have gone back um, since the pandemic, deciding that that was a necessary part of their process. Um, but very, some very high level schools have said, you know what, we realize it's not predictive. It's not helping us to know if kids are going to be successful in college. So we're still very much living in a test optional world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It does feel like if you have five things to evaluate on a test and then four things, right. Right, so the question is our opinion on the on the test optional. And I think and I'll give my answer and then please jump in. Um, to me, when a school says they're test optional, they need that they're saying that because that truly there's they've decided that it's not um, it's not a, a valuable part of their process some schools you'll see written as test flexible um, where if you're not submitting test scores they want something else they want a graded writing sample um, they you know they want some other piece of information to help them to add to the portfolio um, schools are usually and I'm finding schools are to be honest are being more and more transparent when we just ask the question um, I think the general advice and again everything in this process is it depends the general advice is um, if you're at or above their, their published mean or medians, then it's just an additional data point. And if you're below, it probably won't help them. And our typical advice is, <laughs> um, so we wouldn't recommend particularly for one student, you should apply test optional for all of your schools. It's even more individualized than that, where we can take a look at your student's overall list of schools that they're applying to and say, maybe you want to apply test optional to these four schools and send your test scores to these other three schools. So it's not even just a, a student by student, it's a school by school for each student type of decision. And I, I have found that like schools are being pretty honest with us. You know, if, if, if you call or they call or we call and say, this is kind of where it is, like would that, would that data be helpful? You know, especially if it's not, if we don't feel like it's representative of the work that they're going to do. Um, you know, I, I had, they're gonna hate me for saying it publicly, I had some underachievers in my household, right? Like the test score showed them in a different way that maybe the transcript wasn't showing. And so sometimes it's helpful in that way, just to show sometimes just capacity that maybe isn't reflected in a transcript. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good question because um, like our means at a school of accepted students might be different than what they're using like their national averages. And so what the schools are gonna publish, really I would look at you know their, both, both of the data, their, their national averages, so that should be available on their website. Usually they have a profile of their admitted class, the prior admitted class, um, and then certainly also using our resources, you know that information is available in SCORE as well. Anything you'd add to that? Okay, yeah. Ah, oh, do parents have access to SCORE? Um, yes and no. So I know a lot of you are first-time parents and maybe you're like, what the heck is Naviance? Um, so Naviance is, um, has been the industry standard for, oh my gosh, I think like my whole career, like 20 years or so, um, of, of where we store all the data, the college search tools, so you could see our averages. We called it apples to apples. Um, and over the years, like any kind of monopoly, um, in my opinion, they got very relaxed about um, customer service, about updating and upgrading their products. Um, and other people kind of came into the game um, and really rose to the, to the challenge. And so SCORE right now is an exploration. It's really, we are looking at it as a pilot to see if this product works best, most importantly for students, but also for what we need to do in order um, in terms of like sending documents. 
Um, and so, so yes, parent, I have not actively emailed out parent codes because I'm trying to also not cause confusion, um, but your kids can invite you. Um, so all the kids have been invited and almost every single one of them has registered. Um, so you can either get on it through your kid's account, but they can also invite you super easily, almost like a Google Classroom. And then if we decide to migrate over to SCORE, then we'll be certainly emailing out parent account information. But you can see it as a parent in either one of those two ways. Yes. Sorry, in the back. Um, it could, in full transparency, if we find this is not a superior product. If this is not going to be a superior product to what we already have, there were, there were some issues. Nothing that, that held any kids back, like we would never do that. There have been some hiccups with Naviance that made us explore a different product. Um, so, so yes, so we'll be, we'll be, the counselors will be exploring SCORE with you in the junior planning meetings. Um, but in terms of what we use in the fall to send materials and things, um, if we find that SCORE is not a superior product, um, then we could go back to Naviance. We've maintained our Naviance subscription for the time being. We've maintained all of our Naviance data for the time being, just so that we can make a really informed decision. And we will be soliciting feedback from kids and parents about their experience with SCORE. So far, and I get that the juniors are just now starting, starting to get into it, so far the juniors really like. The feedback's been super positive about SCORE. Um, they're, these guys are using it a lot more than I am, but on the, on the surface, it's much more, um, it, it looks like their landscape, they can follow things, they can like things, like it's like their world and their landscape. I think it's much more kid friendly. Um, it gives them a little bit more ownership in the process in terms of adding things to the list. And so we're getting really great feedback from the kids, but um, obviously it's a bigger picture than that and we'll make an informed decision by the end of the year. Yes. Mm, again, I don't want to cause, I, we're walking the line of not causing confusion. And so, so yeah, in your junior planning meetings, the counselors are going to go over it a little bit with you. Um, and there certainly are like videos and things that we can share with you for anybody that we want. Again, I'm hesitant to do a mass like, hey, learn this program. And then if we revert back, ask you to learn something else. So I'm just trying to. You do have access, the kids have, everyone has access to Naviance. Yeah, yeah. We've maintained our subscription. We're just, again, we're focused, we're, fo we're, we're using this to really, we needed to kind of put both feet in score for the spring at least to see like, is this something we want to do so that we can make an informed decision? I don't know who's next, yes. Yes, there is a Board of Education policy around that. So I would, I, we always say to the kids, like, please write a handwritten thank you note. Like, gone is the art of a handwritten thank you note. Um, and so um, the counselors do an awesome job of coaching the kids about letters of recommendation because you're right, they're not obligated to do it. The, the counselors write 50 letters. Like, everyone's spending a lot of time and investment in this. So we always say, and this is a good opportunity, right? We're raising adults, all of us together. Um, so we ask them to ask in person whenever possible. Sometimes it can be hard to connect, but, but really, trying the best you can to say to the teacher, I really enjoyed your class because of X, Y, and Z, or I really felt like you got to know me as a student for X, Y, and Z reason. Um, try and ask in person, and then we coach them along the way about appropriate follow-up, um, and also to always thank them with a handwritten thank you note. I don't think anybody expects a gift. I know some parents like to do that, which is lovely, um, and there is a Board of Ed policy around that. That's off the top of my head, I think it's $50, but I'd have to look it up. Um, and, and here's the only thing I'll say, because this starts to happen more and more, um, and I just think I have to take every public opportunity I can. We understand, in the fall especially, the nerves and the anxiety about getting things in. The deadlines are the deadlines. They're not looking at anything unless it's rolling before that deadline. So if the deadline is November 1, and your kid asks for that letter on September 1, please don't call the counselors and teachers on October 1 and get upset that the letter's not in yet. I, I use the analogy, it's the easiest way to understand it. Like, if your child has a paper that's due on November 1, you might get a little annoyed, and the child would definitely get annoyed if two weeks before the teacher was like, I know it's not due for two weeks, but I'd like to start grading. So if you could please hand in your paper two weeks early, that would be great, right? Um, so that's the best relatable analogy that I can give you. We will hit the deadlines, I promise. Um, if we have had those that 30 days notice, um, we always hit the deadlines. But literally 11.59 p.m. on November 1st is not late. 
And I completely, I am not minimizing, I went through it twice, the anxiety and the just wanting to know it's done and the just wanting to have it everything in, but please just be patient and graceful um, with our staff as they work really, really hard to, to get, they'll get everything in if they've had the notice. Um, but again, 11.59 on the due date is not late. We will always hit the deadline. Questions, yeah. Yeah, your kids, yes. Again, I would encourage you to, to focus on score in the spring. Um, the chances, I mean, again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak and give like odds and chances of us going back, but I would, right now we're using score. And so we can certainly, I have no problem sharing out videos or giving the counselors videos to share with you for parents that want some, from some score advice um, or some score tutorials. We're happy to do that. Just reach out to your counselor and your kids can give you access. Like, there's different search options. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's different ways to filter. So last year, the state test was given digitally. So this current senior class took the SAT school day digitally last year. So we've done this once before. And then next spring, if you have younger kids, in the spring of 24, all weekend tests will be transferring to digital as well. But we've given the digital SAT last year. We'll provide everything. Yes, the only thing that they should be bringing is a College Board approved calculator and drinks and snacks for the breaks. Yeah, we provide everything else. They actually, they're not allowed to bring anything else or it's considered a testing aid. They're very strict. Yes. Yep, they come right down, they can come right down to guidance immediately following test and we have a form. Um, College Board still requires things to be faxed. So <laughs> don't get me started. Um, yep, anybody, anybody ever heard the word fax? Um, <laughs> Kind of an antiquated even word at this point. So there's a form, you cannot do it, or you can mail it in if you um, postmark it by, I think it's 72 hours or something like that. Um, so there's a form that they would come get from us. Um, yep, but it can't be done by email or phone. Yes? Not for SAT school day. So on the Saturday test, I believe that you can pay for that when you register, but SAT school day does not provide that service. Yes. So I'd like to refer to as a parent brag sheet. Um, it's an opportunity for you to brag on your kids. And um, I'll let you guys speak to that. We definitely don't just take your packet and put it in the letter, although sometimes we get that request. Um, <laughs> could you just make this their letter of recommendation? Sometimes we'll get that. Um, so it's a different perspective. And I, you know, I know I can just speak for like when I was a school counselor. I always learned things about your kids, no matter how well I knew them from those packets. Um, and so um, sometimes if it's appropriate to, to tell a story that's reflecting something I'm trying to explain about a child, about their character or their resilience or their hardworking nature. Sometimes I'll say, you know, and their parents shared this really cool story about them. Um, but most of the time, it's really just, a, it's to provide different perspective. Um, I don't know if you wanna, anything you wanna add about that? Uh, so the primary purpose of that packet is to help us prepare for that junior meeting so that we can provide the best information to you and your student. Um, but as Megan said, it might help inform some pieces of the letter. One thing I do want to add is that I've had parents in the past say, please don't include this in the letter of recommendation, but I want you to have this information. So if there's something like that, you can certainly designate that on the packet. Um, and then I believe there is a question that asks you if there's anything else that you want us to know or you want us to make sure we pass along to the college admissions counselors through the letter. Um, and I've had parents say that in the past, of, please make sure that you talk about our family situation or can you please mention in the letter that my student really wanted this particular course but they weren't able to sign up for it just due to the high school schedule, something like that. So if there are points of information, you can certainly communicate that with us. Anyone else? 
And it's also, as Megan mentioned too, sometimes the counselors, or I think Caitlin did, will provide recommendations on schools that might be a good fit for your child. That's also a good place to talk about what you might be looking for. So for example, if your child is looking at schools on the West Coast, but you want them within an hour and a half radius, that's a good time where we have that conversation at that meeting to make sure everybody's on the same page. Like fight, yeah. It's good, but it's, no, it's true. Um, and it also, I, I joke about that, but you know, it really does help us to know like if families and kids are sort of on the, in the, in the same phase or if we're gonna need to help the student to maybe advocate a little bit or help, to help you to advocate a little bit um, and help us to walk that line so that we can really help the family come together and, and hear both perspectives. Um, and it really is those five business days ahead of time. Um, it takes hours to prepare for each of these. They take it really seriously. They do research if they need to. So um, those five business days ahead of your meeting are really crucial timelines. Um, anything short of that, it just cuts our time to be able to, to really adequately prepare so that we can give you the best information. I don't know how we're doing on time. 10.15, 10, okay, we're doing pretty good, hi. So it depends and it depends, um, as with most things. They do not go on the transcript. They are not things that we send. Um, for the seniors, the scores won't even come out until after they've already graduated. The scores will come out in July, usually. Um, and so it would be something that students would choose to send. Um, and, and it really depends on the situation. Like I'll, um, some schools don't take certain AP you know, for credit. Um, AP sort of changed since we all went to school and how they're using it. Sometimes they'll take it for placement, like if you get a four or five on English Lang, you don't have to take English 101 when you get here. You can go on to English 102. So sometimes those are used for placement. Um, you know, my own son got out of a whole semester of um, computer science. He's an engineering major. Um, that saved me $5,000. That was awesome. Um, so he literally just got exempt from that requirement. He gets to take another class in its place um, because of his um, AP Comp Sci exam. So it really, so so three is considered proficient and then school, schools will give um, um, schools will give varying, so they might give, um, if you get a four, they might give you one semester. If you get a five, they might give you two semesters. Um, so every school's a little bit different. So, um, but it is up to the kids to send the scores. So some kids don't want to send the scores. I think they see the whole record, or can you choose? That's changed too. I would have to see whether or not you can just choose or if they see the whole record, because that has changed a bit. And students can list their scores on their common applications, yeah. so they can report them unofficially without sending the official scores so that colleges see them in that way. Um, and then on the College Board's website, there's a list of all the colleges and universities and what they give credit for. So you can look up a specific school and see for AP English language, what score do you need and do you get credit or placement? Like we, we always want the kids to take, um, to take the exam if they've taken the class. Some high schools require it. We don't require it. These kids test enough as it is, we think. Um, but we, we, this is sort of the season where my seniors especially start to cancel tests because they know where they're going to school and the school's not gonna take it. Like a lot of schools won't take both English Lang and English Lit, for example. Like if you've already gotten credit for one, they won't give you credit for the other. So that's a really great resource when it comes to AP. Your test scores, yeah. I think I think we're at like some. It's like yeah, twelve dollars ish. If you want to rush it, and I guess that's a good point to make too. It, we think electronic is instant. It can take almost two weeks um, for once you ask, once you put the order in with the testing agency for their school to actually receive it. So like submitting on October 31st for November 1 deadline is not great. Um, you can rush scores, which I think brings it down to like two days um, for like an additional 35 or 40 bucks, but um, you can pay anything to pay for anything these days. But um, you need, we do not submit test scores. Um, kids can report it unofficially. Um, and then you need to send official scores in most cases if you're submitting any kind of test scores and it can take up to two weeks to get to a school. And we, again, this is all stuff we tell kids, but they're kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are, yep. 
Yeah, and, and so sometimes it's a really great opportunity because a lot of the, if they're in a mix, like junior, senior, like environmental science, for example, comes to mind. They have juniors and seniors in that class, and most of the seniors will be departing on internships. So they'll do really fun, exciting, usually projects or experiments, or so the classes for juniors will continue, and it'll be rela subject-related, but um, yep, they still have to go. They're still graded things. But I think the, the temperature comes way down in those classes. They take some deep breaths. All right, we'll take a couple more. And again, obviously, you have access to your wonderful school counselors anytime. They are a wealth of information. Yes. Winner. Um, yes, the counselors are off for the summer, and while much to my chagrin, sometimes they are stalking their email. Um, I try and like, again, they've got to regroup and rejuvenate. And, and um, so yes, you're welcome to email your counselor. Please also copy me. Um, they're going to let me out apparently for a little bit too, um, but but somebody will always get back to you. And then Leslie Leslie Lajoy is here all summer as well, and she and I try and time our vacations opposite so that there's always somebody. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Uh, a couple of summer programs. Uh, so I'm teaching a college essay writing class this summer through Darien Summer School, and Lisa Messinio, one of our other fantastic counselors, is teaching a college application workshop. We have several different models of it. So in one, the student comes for two hours per day for five days, and they're pretty much done with either their application or their personal statement, that main common application essay, in in that one week. Um, another model, I teach the essay for two mornings. It's a longer morning, about four-ish hours for two mornings, and they're done with the essay. Um, and then Lisa and I team teach a two full days. So for that one, the students work on both the application and the essay for two full days, and they're pretty much done at the end of that. It's really a gift for you. Yes. <laughs> In a lot of ways. Um, you know, I was always, I. I've done this for 20 years and I've spent 20 years like telling parents, it's fine, it's all going to be fine, it's all going to be good. And um, I, I laugh still because on September 6th of my daughter's senior year, I was driving to work and I still remember where I was in Darien and I'm like, she hasn't done her essay. Right? I, I realize this is how people become crazy in this process. Um, but, it, but it was September 6th and it really, it's a gift you'll give yourself and the kid too and we say this to them. Like if they can get, the essay is the hard part, right? The common app is not hard. It's the essay that takes time and thought and revision and so, um, and so it's a gift that if they can get that done in the summer when things are a little quieter, um, that would be that would be encouraged. Yes. The SAT prep or what Caitlin was just talking about. Yep, that should be that should be on school cash online. I I don't know which which one this the one the March one I think is on there. Yeah. They always posted those on School Cash, but that's Kara Blatney, our bursar. So I don't know the timing of when that gets posted. What Caitlin was just referring to is on the DHS Summer School website. But yes, those classes will be posted on School Cash. I just don't know the timing of it. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Those were really, really good questions. I'm sorry? Parking rules are still in effect. Yeah. You're welcome to reach out to your assistant principal. <laughs> it's one of the few things I don't, I don't handle is parking. It's a very perfectly good question, though. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for coming so much. And please reach out to us if there's anything we can do. Have a great morning. <laughs>